Recording in progress. Hi, everyone. Hope you're doing good today. Uh, this is Will, a.k.a. Dr. Financial Literacy. Just wanted to give you a general update of how things are going with the uh, HELOC. Now that I've moved from improving my credit or reducing my debt with the credit cards, I moved to a larger line of credit uh, in terms of the HELOC. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, and share my screen. All right, guys. Um, so again, this is my update for 8-124. Uh, my name is Will, um, aka Dr. Financial Literacy. I am a political economist, and I generally um, look at the interaction between the government and the economy. I think I'm the only YouTuber, particularly political economist, that are, that's looking at velocity banking. And I started this experiment, started looking at this um, because I went on the web and really didn't see research or studies on it. But I definitely was hearing people talking about paying down their credit cards, paying down their debt, paying down their mortgage. Um, and I was able to pay uh, one of my um, three mortgages uh, within one month using Velocity Banking. Um, what is velocity banking? Uh, velocity banking is a method of using a line of credit, lock someone else's money as a strategy to reduce your um, debt, loan, bills, mortgage, credit cards, um, et cetera. In my case, when I started doing velocity banking, um, I had credit card debt. I reduced that by uh, uh, 15 to 20,000 within a four or five month um, period using velocity method banking and other methods um, such as cash advance, um, convenience checks in general to do some of those things. Uh, velocity banking, uh, hopefully after the video, you um, have an understanding of how to use a line of credit. What is velocity banking in the real world? Uh, how to um, set a budget to track progress in velocity banking? how interest uh, is calculated in Velocity Banking and various other aspects, and how to track your credit score in Velocity Banking. All right, just a moment. All right, had to grab some more coffee. Thank you. All right, um, in Velocity Banking or traditional banking, before I started Velocity Banking, um, I was picking up my paycheck. Uh, deposited it into the bank, uh, paying down my debt, and whatever remains was remaining in the bank. Under principal practices and techniques and strategy of velocity banking, I switched from getting my paycheck, putting it into the bank, paying down the debt, to now having everything sit on a credit card or whatever debt I have, and then paying it off. So I started um, putting my entire, putting a portion of my check into um, one of my credit cards and then paying my bills from there. Um, then I eventually moved to putting my entire um, paycheck into a credit card and started using cash advances and also convenience checks from that, that particular account and pay down the debt. Um, cost to obtain the uh, $50,000 HELOC. Uh, when I got the $50,000 HELOC, um, it paid off one of my mortgages, paid off a credit card, it paid off an auto loan, it paid off another credit card, and paid off one of two pledged loans that I had out at a credit union. There was also a closing cost of $1,203, $1,000, $236.60 to close the $50,000 uh, HELOC. Um, 1735. Um, and then there are other costs that were associated. So when you add the three numbers up, um, they total $50,000. So let's do that 23, 70, 94, plus cash that they gave me at closing, 36, 60. And also the $46,000 in debt that it wiped out, 46902. Oh, well, not so much as wiped out as uh, consolidated. 
Okay. I came up with um fifty thousand five hundred and ten. So maybe I got an extra ten dollars in there somewhere. Now I'll go back and do the math again. Um, so what's happened to me um with um velocity banking and zero account? Now, some of the advocates indicate with velocity banking of moving all your resources into a line of credit and operating off of that. So this is just one of my accounts um, that I historically did have um, some money in, and I just fundamentally moved um, money out of it and even closed some accounts that had money in that were paying me maybe 10 cents or 20 cents um, per quarter. Um, so these are just some of the amounts um, that's in there, and I moved away. Uh, this is also my a, a business credit card at 732, so that's not an account. And also, one of my mortgages was closed out and transferred over to another service provider. Um, this is another account where I also uh, fundamentally um, moved all my resources out of it initially but now it's kind of like a primary account that i use in conjunction with the heloc so what i do is let my heloc remain hopefully intact for the entire month and then charge all my expenses on to a credit card now, with the Navy Federal Credit Card, I can take out a cash advance, and I can also have convenience checks. So for those charges that I could not pay with Navy Federal, then I simply use the convenience check to get it onto the card and then try to pay it off each month. I wasn't successful every each and every month, but it was a system that I was able to get every um, dollar onto the card and help with paying down uh, the debt. Um, some advocates um, indicate that you can have a, another account, have a zero, and then when it hits that account for any of your bills, then it pulls from your credit card. I have attempted and used that as a strategy. Uh, so it does work in some cases. Um, these were um, the different types of schedule or statements, just like you have your credit card statement. Um, the HELOC had statement periods also. Uh, so my first statement period was when I first got the HELOC on 410 and it ran, it operated to um, calculate it 5724. Right now, I'm in a period of running from 7824 to 8724, um, which would be, I think, 31 days. And the HELOC that I have is costing $14.14 .14 per day times 31. So if I just had the principal balance of 50500 at $14 uh, per day, 14, 14 times 31, then my interest payment should be $438.34. But as you've been following uh, along, my interest has been going up and it has been, I mean, um, my, my balance principal has been going up and has been um, going down. So uh, the interest should be lower than 438.34. Um, this is, let's see. Okay. So this is the uh, third month of experimenting with payments to my $50,500 HELOC line of credit. Um, the HELOC is the line of credit similar to um, the credit card being a line of uh, credit. And these are just some of the details. Um, this is August. So this, I should have had the date on it. This is August um, uh, date. So, um, the monthly payment of fourteen twelve. I need to talk to them about that to find out uh, what is um, going on there. Uh, the interest rate for the HELOC ten point two five zero. The current principal balance of what I owe um, initially from the fifty is now forty six six four three eighty eight as of today. 
uh, I made a payment last night of um, $1,000. So when I received money from my investments, um, I took that money and put it into the HELOC and pay bills on the investment. Uh, one thing I will kind of like about it, um, I'm able to pay it and then the money kind of like sits there for a while, gaining some more interest. My due, my next due date is uh, 9 one twenty four. So far, if you can see here at the bottom, the principal paid has been three thousand eight hundred fifty six dollars and twelve cents. Uh, so as uh, stated earlier, my net take home in um, income from my employer is three thousand three hundred and ninety. So I've been able to fundamentally put my entire paycheck from my W-2 employer inside of the HELOC. And now I'm pulling out the money um, from the HELOC to pay my bills. And I'll show you some of the um, bills that have been paid from the HELOC. The interest I've paid since um, May, since April uh, 24 has been $1,257.94. I'm going to go back and compare that to the mortgage of $37,500 that was paid off with the heat off. Okay, payments to the HELOC so far. Um, this is going to be a two-page continuous. So um, I should have started from the bottom. Let me go to the first page. Okay, I'm going to stop this for just a minute. No, no, I'm going to go forward. Um, so this was the first page, or should have been the first page, starting from 7, 8, 24. I put in $100 to test making a principal-only payment. So right now, there's three periods to the HELOC. There's a draw period, which is three years only, and I can pay interest or principal. Then there's a seven-year period, which is um, I can only pay principal and interest, but I can't draw any more money. So I only have three years to draw money. And then there's the principal and interest period in general, where whatever is left on the balance, it becomes the principal and the interest, just like a mortgage. So in different HELOCs are going to come with different periods. So, so far, um, I've also made a payment on a knife of $1,000. Uh, $548 went toward the principal and $451.81 toward the regular payment. Now that's interest only. So that $451.81 interest part of it and we said fourteen dollars and uh, fourteen cents a day so let's see five i'm sorry four five one decimal eighty one divided by fourteen fourteen so that was about a 31 day um um period that they charged me so again this is a simple interest loan where i'm charged on the money that i'm used on a daily basis and that is at about 14, 14 per day. As the balance drops, the interest per day, I mean, yes, the interest per day or dollar amount per day will decrease. So with it being at 46, I probably expect to pay um, 46,000 times the interest rate of 1025 divided by 366 because we're in a leap year, about $12.88 um, per day in interest. All right, so save me maybe a dollar. Um, so I also uh, made a principal payment of $10. Again, I was testing the system, see how it works to get money on it. Um, then I put in 2,000 principal only. Uh, that brought it down further, 1,000 principal only. And then I did a withdrawal of ten dollars to see. Because I say principal payment, so I need to check on that. 
I think um, they changed it a, a little higher and then they took out 2000. So the company is in transition. So some of the, um, the accountant information they're trying to correct. Um, this is going toward the end. Um, I made a principle of 10, another principle, I wouldn't say another 2000. They just minus 2000, brought it in. So again, they're working through some kinks. Um, I made a thousand dollars and then there was a principal disbursement. Um, so what I did was go into the HELOC and no, I'm sorry. I had to call do it through paperwork, send them an email, sign a piece of paper and a form. So again, as I mentioned before, this particular HELOC is kind of more paper based than other HELOCs that you may have at the bank. It has a, um, checking account and everything tied into it. Um, so $1,000 came out as an ACH transfer to another account. Um, one of my other mortgages at 738, I wrote a check for that off of the HELOC. 374 is my student loan out of the HELOC. Then I put in yesterday a thousand and then another thousand. Um, once um, my investment income came in for the month and another principal disbursement. Each time you see a principal disbursement, it's either I'm taking money out or um, it's a check. Um, I wish it would make more of a distinction um, of which one is that. Okay. Um, I think this, this, uh, I looked at um, the PowerPoint itself in general, and this is just a, a, a recap of um, calculating the interest. Uh, yes, as I talked about earlier, uh, when I first got the HELOC, it was at $50,500. Once they added the interest on it, it came up to $50,881, and that was reported to the credit bureau so that's why I was using this slide. So my credit usage as a result of going over, because um, I had a full draw and I didn't pay anything for the principal for the first time. So I was reported to the bureau and my um, HELOC was 100.75. Uh, the next month was the same thing, just paying the interest. It was reported 100.90%. Um, and again, um, for the third payment, it was 100 and 0.1% over the credit utilization. Um, so at least for the first three months and me just paying the interest just by choice, my credit utilization on this particular um, item has gone up, but it should be um, lower. Uh, when I first started, uh, this was um, one of the credit cards that I had. It had a, um, yes, I'm sorry. This is um the credit card that I use in terms of velocity banking as a tool, I use the cash advance, which are made up of convenience checks and also getting cash from the card to pay other credit cards because this was at like an 18% uh, interest. When I first got the card or initially when I first started using velocity banking, I think I may have had a balance of five or $6,000 and this was one of the cards um, that I pay down. But this is um, my principal go-to card that I try to charge everything on and then pay it off at the end of the month. Uh, this was just uh, where I calculated the interest. Uh, we're in a leap year, so 366 days that I'm using. 8% um, on a credit card. When I took off um, all of the cash, it was at an 18% interest. Uh, divided by 366 or 365, it ended up being about 91 cents per day. So what I was doing was taking a cash off this card at 91 cents per day to pay off some of the other credit cards that were at like five and six dollars per day. Uh, uh, credit. When I did the cash advance, um. Some would charge a fee. I never paid a fee because I never went to the ATMs. I just did it all online. But if you use a cash advance convenient, I mean, um, 
yeah, the cash advance, they could charge you a fee. Uh, again, um, 92 cents. Uh, credit card debt. Um, I think I ran this analysis to show that if I borrow 1860, which I did from one of the credit um, from the credit card to pay off another credit card, the in total interest was 186. And looking at just the credit card that I was carrying, the balance was if if the balance was 1860, then it would be a total interest of 340. So even with me using a cash advance or a convenience check to pull money off of one credit card and then take it over to another credit card with a higher interest, I was able to save um let's see uh 340 58 186 30 a difference of $154 um, in interest. Uh, what's happened to my credit score? Uh, so in looking at the credit score, uh, it was um, much lower than this. I need to put in some other ones that was lower, but in, um, I think that was May, um, 724, 751, and this is using the FICA eight model. So there are a number of different models. When I tried to understand the models and talk to the credit card companies, um, there are hundreds of models out there, uh, but then there are some top models that are used. Uh, as of today, I think it is, I should have, uh, 773, so it went up. Um, also, use the Bank of America. So different models, they use trans TransUnion. So there's different scoring models was really what I was trying to get at to show you. Uh, today, I ran it, um, and it showed me at 737, so um, 14 points uh, lower. And that can be because uh, the balance on the credit cards are fluctuating. This is the um, score at uh, Navy Federal. Um, they use TransUnion, has me at 628. And you can see the score history on the, um, to my right. So again, different models, different scoring. And looking at the Navy Federal um, um, credit, monitoring thing that they have uh you can see some more information at 628 got 20 open accounts uh one late payment one collection payment uh hard inquiries 12. i got those 12 when i was looking for the heloc and looking for um first lien uh credit usage uh 12 percent uh, total debt three twenty one oh six. Uh, when I first started, I think I was at three um fifty fifty two to fifty five um in in total debt. So I've been able to at least reduce it. Let me just say three fifty two uh, minus uh three twenty one oh six two. Three fifty two minus uh, three twenty one oh six two, so that's like uh, thirty thousand dollar um uh, difference um, oh, damn that's um much much more than I thought. Um, I'll go back and do the numbers again, and make sure. Let's see. So this is also one of the credit monitoring things that I use to go back to see how much um, credit debt I was running starting in December, 2023, and how much debt I've been able to reduce over the last uh, seven months. Uh, what happened to me with my apartment rent? Um, I don't know why I put this one in, let's go back. Uh, let me go back to that. Okay, I think I wanted to put in a different PowerPoint, but in general, um, 
the rent and paying uh, my rent about fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars. I write one of the. I was using convenience checks. Now, because I have the HELOC starting in uh, July, I started writing it outside of the HELOC. So the rent is due on the fourth uh, Sunday. So what I do is write from the HELOC check fourteen hundred and uh, give it to the uh, apartment uh, complex Sunday. And it'll come out of the HELOC in general, and I won't be using the convenience check system that I was using previously. The, this is just general information, earlier slides. This is when I'm starting to look at my budget. It's going to be higher now because I'm more familiar with velocity banking. I'm going to start bringing in my um, investment income and my investment expenses plus my plus my uh, regular uh, W-2 income. So let's say 6873 40 minus my W-2 income for the month by me placing my entire paycheck into the HELOC. 33.90 is my net in California that I'm bringing home. So 6873.40 minus my net W-2 income. That is 33.90. So about Oh, uh, it says 3,000. I need to look at those uh, number again because it should be close to about 2,000 of investment income. So I'll go back and um, re I'll go back and review those numbers. So the cash flow here shows 1365, but again, I'm gonna go back and review those numbers. And cash flow is the difference between my income, which is made up of W-2 income and investment income and all of my expenses. What I'm paying to generate the um, income and what I'm generate, using to generate um, investment income, which is paying the mortgages, paying the insurance, paying in HOA fees uh, in general. My debts, as we looked at on the previous um, slide, was uh, 3021 So I'm going to drop that in again once I look at the numbers. So biweekly, I think I'm bringing home sixteen eighty six forty dollars for my W-2 income and rental income of about 3000 I need to look at that, um, that again because it's rental income and it can be other investment income. I need to break that down to make sure that's accurate. Uh, in general expenses, one of my largest <laughs> expenses now, um, God bless y'all for those individuals who were able to get their um, student loans forgiven. Um, right now I'm carrying about 159,000 in uh, student loans. Uh, right now I have two mortgages left of three. I was at 143,000. I was able to pay that one off at 37. So that um, brought it down. And now I owe 110,000 on two, two investment properties. And I'm gonna continue to use Velocity Banking and Accelerated Banking to pay, that, pay those down. Uh, next steps. Um, Hey, yeah, next up, if you'd like to um, reduce your debt in terms of um, credit cards, mortgages, starting the business, starting the LLC, getting into property management, property investment, option trading stocks. Um, I've kind of like did a number of um, things in general, um, but I really need to probably specialize more to really exponentially um, grow my um, my wealth to be able to pass along. So um, you got my number, you got my email. If I can help you, if you have any questions, um, just feel free to give me a call and um, we can see how my team can help. All right, thank you very much.
again, this has been Will, aka Dr. Financial Literacy. Uh, have a great day.